The north of Portugal is more than just the north and what to do there I'll show you in this video. <laughs> Hey my friend and welcome back to my Portugal series. In my last video I showed you things to do in Porto, especially those port wine tastings. In this video we're not only going to explore the origin of the port wine, the Dugo Valley, but also the national park of Peneda Jerez. So, and if one of us skips, the other one has to pay the whole expensive of our holidays. Let's go! This trip just happened because we completely went with the flow, not planning anything and just go by recommendations. Most tours, like touristic tours, actually just go to Peso de Regua, but our guide Anna from the Porto Walkers the day before in Porto actually recommended us to go a bit further to a city called Pinhao. Pinhao? Pinhao. <laughs> I'm sorry. And that is called the heart of the Douro Valley. And so we did. The journey from Porto to Pinhao actually took us around like two, two and a half hours. But I also heard there's a beautiful train ride along like the wine yards and everything. That also takes approximately like two and a half hours. So if you don't have a car, that's definitely an option for you. Most of the time we were on the highway, but then it got into a lot of curry roads alongside some beautiful quintas, which means wineries and the wine yards all over the place. So we are now in the Duro Valley. Behind me you see the olive trees and the wine yards. And we're now getting closer to the city, actually on the river of Duro. Oh. Get something to eat. I can just tell you it was beautiful to go all the way down there to Pinhao. I didn't get sick even though it was super curvy so just the way there is beautiful. The small city is located really down there in the valley next to the Dewar River and I can only recommend to do a boat tour. We paid 10 euros for half an hour and it was so worth it. The day was actually super hot compared to the days before, it was like 25 degrees, so this fresh breeze on the boat was just super relaxing and simply beautiful. Of course we had the best weather there, but we were just really on the river alongside in the, in the valley and it was so beautiful. And actually we were the only ones on the boat for, except for one British guy who moved to Porto seven months before and we just became friends with him. After that we got quite hungry and together with Jay we got into this restaurant called The Rider's Place. Oh my god, probably I've had the best food of my life when I was there, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Maria was once a chef in the Parisian haute cuisine and you could definitely taste her love for cooking in every meal we had. And we had quite some and spent actually three and a half hours there. And that was not just because of the delicious food or the good wine they gave us or the dessert, we had a lot. No, it was just the complete atmosphere there. I felt super at peace there. We had this view over the river and we had some really nice chats with the two owners of the restaurant and yeah. By any chance, if you can get there, go there, take your time because Maria doesn't like to rush, but it's so worth it and you're actually gonna calm down there. Later that afternoon, we went back into the car and got all the way up to the north into the national park of Penedas Xeres. It was another really long road, but supported by the new album of Justin Bieber, we drove all the way up there, always trying to catch the sun because it went down and night appeared. What really struck my interest, like from getting to Porto, to Duro Valley, to Xeres, was actually that not just the landscape really changed but also the houses changed because of like different weather conditions like the northern up we got houses were built like a lot of complete raw stone 
or had a lot more piles on them because they want to be protected from the rain and from the cold as well because the north is known for being rainy at least usually we were so lucky with the weather i can't even tell you as the road got more and more curvy and we got deeper into the forest there appeared a lot of like signs with attention cows and we just smiled and were like yeah of course until we drove around one corner and there were actually two big cows on the street and they didn't seem to go anywhere soon they were pretty relaxed but actually they did leave <laughs> um, because otherwise we probably would have been stuck there because we were too like ah because <laughs> we were not expecting that <laughs> we were so in awe of this place already because there's like this huge river which actually appears more like a lake and even though it was like after sunset we still got the beauty of it until we arrived in our home for the night in National Sheresh, a youth hostel there, really beautiful. It was already dark and we kind of struggled a bit to get up there, but we made it. Luckily Claudia welcomed us even late at night. I think it was like 10, 10.30, something around that. And we got to check in, she explained everything around the hostel to us and her room was actually pretty nice. We also got extra cozy blankets because as she said, we are up in the north, it can get a bit cold and it got cold. <laughs> Next morning we woke up as the sun was shining into our window because we were on the side where the sun is actually going up. So then we actually realized how big this hostel was and we decided that we want to stay a night longer because we actually plan to go on a hike. We met a German girl there who was actually in Porto for the last few months and she recommended us to go to La Petra Bella. It's a miraduro or a viewpoint. So we thought we're gonna go there and of course we're gonna do a waterfall because we are in a national park so we gotta do a waterfall. We got to the main street to get some food for the day, also get two caps because it was hot that day again and the sun was shining down. Actually we were recommended to take a taxi but we asked somebody and the taxi would only be there in like one hour so we thought we're just gonna walk. And you know my cousin actually loves dogs <laughs> and there were a lot of dogs on the street and she was petting them and one of them actually followed us. And we thought, yeah, okay, it's just a few meters, but he actually followed us all the way. All the way. We couldn't do anything, like, <laughs> he just followed us. But he was actually so cute, so well behaved. He also got a mark, and his name is Gandhi. He just went with us. We went all the way to the top. We had a lot of fun with him. It was a really nice hike. It was hard in a way, because I'm just not used to anything, but it was a really nice walk. When we arrived at the top, we were, it was just breathtaking, like seeing this lake down there and oh my god, it was amazing. Like the views were so worth it. Yeah, we decided to have a little, little lunch there and we chilled there. Gandhi actually stayed with us the whole time, even though there were other people coming all the time, he stayed with us. <laughs> and then we decided to just go back down and, and we thought we skipped the waterfall because just like that it was already 12 kilometers like up and down so we thought we're good with that and it also got later and later in the day so we walked all the way down and then the minute we touched the street again out of the forest there was a jeep coming by and Gandhi was crazy running after him and a guy like a young man got out of the car and it appears that he knew Gandhi and it turns out he was actually his owner and we actually expected somebody to be super angry at us for taking the dog or whatever but he actually thanked us he was like he disappeared from our home this morning we didn't know where he was thank you so so much for taking care of him and everything so it was 
it was so nice to give Gandhi back. Of course it was sad, but it was so good to see that he's actually in really good hands. But we still wanted to do this waterfall thing. So actually, we made a pact that next morning, before we drive all the way to the south, we will gonna jump into a waterfall early in the morning and if one of us skips the other one has to pay the whole expensive of our holidays well let's see if we did it right <laughs> so early in the morning 5 30 a.m our alarm started and we made our way all the way down and along another curvy road, we arrived at the Tahiti Waterfalls. And what can I say? We did it! <laughs> Always seek discomfort. And with that, I'm gonna end this video. I really hope you enjoyed it because in my next one, we're gonna get down all the way to the south. And I can tell you that actually I got Sa <laughs> I saved some footage from there, so make sure to watch it. So until next time, stay tuned, stay curious and stay creative, my friend.